And last week we heard of Anna Sebastian, who four months into a job, at the age of 26, she died. And what I wanted to do is take the statement made by Mr. Rajiv Memani, who is the EY chairman of India, and try to dissect it and find out what exactly his position is. So he says, Anna worked with us for only for four months. Note every word. She was allotted work like any other employee. We don't believe that work pressure could have claimed her. It seems like a very straightforward statement, but let's go deep into it and find out what it is. The statement that Anna worked with us for four months creates emotional distance between the speaker and Anna. By focusing on the brevity of time at the organization, the speaker subtly downplays the connection and responsibility towards Anna. Using the word only suggests that the short duration somehow minimizes the significance of her life contributions, which can be perceived as emotionally distancing from the, from the death of the child. So the second thing is the normalization of workload. She was allotted work like any other employee. Attempts to normalize Anna's treatment and workload, implying that her situation was no different from others. And this positions the company in defensive posture, subtly shifting the blame away from the organization. By equating Anna's experience with that of any other employee, it implies that if others are fine under similar conditions, Anna's unfortunate outcome might be her own issue, not a systemic one. So he just washed off his hands. And then the worst thing is the denial of responsibility. We don't believe that work pressure could have claimed her life. This is a direct denial of any link between work conditions and Anna's fate. The use of we don't believe is a very interest, interesting linguistic choice. It conveys an opinion that opinion rather than a fact, avoiding outright accountability, could have claimed her life, introduces a passive construction which softens the severity of the situation and reduces the sense of direct cause and effect over there in the situation. There's no explicit subject or cause. Work pressure is distanced, further avoiding clear attribution of responsibility. And then the fourth thing you come across is that the defensiveness and avoidance of emotion. The tone of the statement is formal and lacks empathy. Using clinical language like allotted work and claimed a life this contributes to the sense of defensiveness as the speaker avoids addressing the human or the emotional aspect of Anna's death. The absence of any expression of regret, sorrow, condolence of Anna's passing creates an impersonal and even bureaucratic feel, reinforcing the idea that organization is more focused on protecting itself rather than empathizing with the lost. So in summary, let's see what, just wrap it up. The statement employs distancing language and defensiveness, objectifying Anna and minimizing emotional responsibility. By focusing on the brief time Anna spent at the company, normalizing her workload and denying direct accountability the organization attempting to dissociate, disassociate itself from her death without openly expressing concern and responsibility. This creates a very impersonal, emotionally cold tone, which may come across as the dismissive of the seriousness of the situation. So now what I want you to do is, if you were the chairman of EY, what would you write? Thank you for listening.